Hi guys, it's Amy, and you have found Amy Loves Crochet. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I do sincerely appreciate when you want to come spend time with me, so thank you, thank you. I hope to make you smile or laugh or be inspired or motivated or just enjoy some yarn talk, crochet time with friends. So I've taken a couple week, week and a half, maybe two weeks off. I haven't done any videoing or any uploading or anything. I'm just enjoying the last crunch down to Christmas for the holidays and so forth. Lots of little bits and pieces to tie up. Uh, we don't have a really big family out here. It's just my husband and I and our two sons, their significant others, um, now my grandbaby, and my husband's brother lives out here and his wife. So it's just a very small, very small group that gets together for Christmas anymore um, or the holidays at all since we've moved to, lot, to St. Louis. Um, so it was a nice little gathering. Um, one of my sons did have to work, so it was even smaller than it was intended to, to be. And um, I got a bunch of little small gifts and wrapped them up for some games. And we played some bingo with Nightmare Before Christmas, which to me, you know, that's one of those really great twofers because you can enjoy it for Halloween or for Christmas. But my mindset is really more for Halloween. I know it's a kind of Maybe not everybody agrees with me for that, but we love it in this house. My mother loved it. Um, my son's girlfriend loves it. So it's it's very much enjoyed in this house, Nightmare Before Christmas. And I watch it year round, so that doesn't even matter. <laughs> so um, we had bingo with that, so that was a lot of fun. And um, I don't know, just some silliness. You know, we played a left-right game and everybody's switching the gift from the left to the right. And then you end up with something. Um, there was some fun gifts, some things that wouldn't match for people. And so that was just a lot of fun. So you got to create the fun where you can, you know, if there's not a whole lot of people, then create craziness so that it feels like a whole lot of people, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, so yeah, it was just a great break. I needed it very, very much. And, um, I look forward to this next year. Uh, I had some things that I was going to work on, you know, some scheduling, some plans that I had kind of morphed and changed since time is going on. So I know that makes a whole lot of no sense to you, but I'm just trying to clear my thought process of what I wanted to talk about. Um, so I have received in the past and I shared with you guys um, a card that my niece drew up for me and sent to me after Easter when I had made some things for her. See, here's Auntie Amy and her little signature down here, Claire. Um, and it's just this beautiful little card just drawn up of all the things that I had crocheted. I made a yellow basket. It's hard to see here. There's a yellow basket and there's a carrot. And then I made a bunch of peeps and a little basket. And so I should yell this when I received it back earlier in the year. Um, but she has sent me another one for Christmas and she's just blowing my mind with the artistic ability that she's got. So her sweet little card here. It's so fun to get these from her. Hold on to your seats, folks. <laughs> She's got me a whole little Christmas scene with a fireplace and I got little mantle goodies and she even created me a little crochet corner over here with my basket of yarn. Can you believe that? Look how sweet. Thank you, Claire. I love you so much. You're so talented and I love getting my little cards. So yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But what I really also wanted to share with you, because that's from family, so I know that whether I had the YouTube channel or not, she probably would have sent those to me in thanks for the things that I crocheted for her. But one of you all in the YouTube community, k, k Crochet, I got my first happy mail, real, real live happy mail from somebody in the YouTube community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. My heart just exploded when I went to the box and there was actually something in it for the first time. So... Um, Thank you very much. If you guys have not already found K and K Crochet, I'm going to go ahead and link them down below. Lovely little mother-daughter duo, and um, they've got some really, really great projects and ideas and um, contacts. She's received happy mail from some big name people out there, and so good for you. I'm I'm really excited for you guys to see where you might take your your channel. So, like I said, I'll link that down below. So make sure to give them a a check. You know, check them out and give them some love. So um, thank you again for my first ever real true life happy mail. <laughs> um, so the tutorial that I want to share with you today is for, it's again out of my book that I've been working on. And here's a closer look. I know I've been flashing it too quickly for you guys. And if you want to find it, just put in crochet stitch guide. And this one's got 86. There are different ones that have different amounts of um, 
stitches in there. So uh, the 86 is the one that I'm working on. Um, but here is the Cluster Explosion Blanket in a solid color so that you can see what that would look like. It's very cute. I mean, it's very, it's working up really quickly. Um, I will share one, I'm not going to say an issue, but something that I ran into repeatedly. Um, the stitch, one of the stitches that you use on here is a cluster stitch. And generally speaking, after a cluster stitch, you do a chain one to lock it or to secure it or whatever you want to say. Um, in this blanket, in this stitch, there is not a chain one after your cluster. You just go right into the next uh, double crochet. So I found that I was absentmindedly doing that chain one and then I would see it on the, on the row back, you know, when I came back through. Sometimes I'd frog that, that row and a half out and sometimes I just let it go. So you're not gonna be able to tell where it is unless I point it out. So I will not be pointing it out. <laughs> and I did, a, um, I did a simple border on this one with just a single crochet row and then I did a double crochet row. I mean, not a double crochet, a half double. Um, I like a little basic border, but this is the blanket. And I'll tell you what I did. I took out one of the colorways. Oh gosh, I so like this. I really like that color group together. This one's a little bit smaller. It's more of a baby blanket. It's um, like a square. And I'll put down the measurements here. I forgot to. So this is the yarn that I'm using. Um, you know me and loving my Karen Big Donuts. Um, and there are actually five colors in this one. This is called Spice Ginger. So it's got this great brown and then the blue and then the two oranges. And then it's got this maroon or burgundy color. I took that out. Um, that was like, you know, me doing what me is going to do. <laughs> you know, I play with my colors. Sometimes we do color controlling. Sometimes we do not. Now for, I know that some of you in, in, in a lot of Amy situations, this color split would not be okay. And I've heard some of, I've heard, I've read in a comment um, or two from you all that if you were making this, that this color change would drive you crazy. So um, I can appreciate that because I am definitely like that as well in a lot of cases. But when I'm working with my Karen Ogos, um, I am not concerned with where my row ends off and picks up with a new color because um, Kind of in my opinion, you know, this is meant to just go on and on and on. And if I'm color controlling, then why did I go through the trouble of buying a skein that has multicolors? Now, like in this case, I like all the colors together, except I took out that maroon, like I said. Um, but, you know, that just makes the projects different, you know. Um, and again, I really don't mind that the end of the row, you know, the end of the color is in the middle of a row. I, I really don't. So um, I just liked these colors together so much. And let me just show you the stitch. It's so quick and easy to do. We're gonna knock this tutorial out real quick and then you will be on your own. <laughs> um, now again, this is a four worsted, worsted weight four. So you could really use, but you know, when I'm showing you these tutorials, it's for the stitch. It's not necessarily for the project. So you could use any yarn and its corresponding hook size and come up with whatever, you know, make this into a scarf or a, a blanket or a bag. I always say that. And then you got to line the bag or Amy's got to line the bag. So anyway, some of you may notice I also have removed one of my anniversary cakes. I started working on something with that that called for a six and it was the only six I had. I'm not really pleased with how it turned out. Um, so I'm gonna try again with a different six. I'll go to the store and buy some six, a different skein of six weight yarn and then show you that one. But I couldn't help but notice this big old gapping empty space behind me. <laughs> um, so this blanket I did with uh, 95 chains for this size. I'll go ahead and hold it up again because you can see the whole thing. You know, it's just like a square. Um, and again, I really don't mind that the color changed in the middle of the row. I really don't. So I just, the dark orange is what ended up going around and around. So I'm going to go ahead and head on down to the tabletop so we can work on this tutorial. Come on with me. So go ahead and gather all the supplies that you'll need. 
you know, tape measure and a stitch marker may not be necessary. You're going to need to sew in some ends and snip your yarn. Uh, but otherwise, this is the yarn again that I'm using. It's the Karen Big, Cake, uh, Big Donut. And its mm, specs are here. And here again is a close up of the stitch that we are, the blanket that I made with this stitch. So you can see these beautiful clusters. There's a double crochet here and a space and then your clusters. So I put on a very basic border of a single crochet and then a row of half doubles with, um, for the single crochet, I did one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet, but for the half doubles, I did three half doubles in that chain space from the single crochet row. So what I'm gonna do is for this blanket, um, this was about 32 by 32 or so, and I used two Ogos and um, except the magenta section, the, this burgundy section. So I have that left and then this much from having put the border on with this dark orange color. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sample size for you today. Um, our chain multiple is three plus two. So I'm going to chain 17 and you go ahead and get your desired number of chains on. And this is going to be the width of the project. So I'll meet you back when you've got all your chains on here. And the first stitch that we're going to do is a cluster stitch into the fifth chain from the hook. So let's come in a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to yarn over and go into the fifth stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over and go through two, and then we're going to repeat that. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to do it one more time. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two. So now you've got four loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all of that together. And that is essentially the stitch that we're doing here today. We've got a double crochet by going into the fifth chain. We made a double crochet and a chain one, and then our cluster. So here is where I said that it is very natural to want to do a chain one to secure your cluster. That does not happen in this project. If you want to keep yourself from being confused and start to put that in there, I don't think it's going to affect the project that much. So I'm going to try my best to leave it out as the project, as the pattern, you know, the stitch calls for. Um, but if you think you're going to mess it up by doing it randomly throughout, then go ahead and just do it now and we'll call it a chain one after the cluster. So go ahead and skip two spaces. And then in the third space, we're going to do this whole thing all over again. So that's the repeat for the rest of the row is we're going to yarn over and go in to it, the third stitch there, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We've made a double crochet. We're going to chain one and then do a cluster in that same stitch. So right there where the double crochet is, we're gonna yarn over and go in, pull through two. We're gonna do that three times. Yarn over and pull up, go through two, yarn over, same stitch, yarn over, pull up. We've got going through two, and now we've got that four on our hook. So that's the end of the cluster, that's the end of the stitch. We're gonna end this row with, you've, you should have three stitches left, we're going to skip the last two and do a double crochet in the final stitch. Oops. And then you're going to chain four and turn, and that's going to count for your double crochet and the chain one. And then this is the pattern for the rest of the, the repeat for the rest of the pattern. We're going to do a cluster in this first space so that it creates the full shell on the edge. Pull through your four, and there is your edging. So you're going to repeat this pattern all the way down, and what you're gonna do is just go right into this stitch here. You're doing these full shells, which is the double crochet, chain one, and a cluster, on top of the double crochet from the row below. So that's here. 
And if you were like me and you were accidentally doing another chain one, I mean, yeah, a chain after your cluster, you'll have another little tiny stitch right here. And that's why I say it doesn't really, you can't really see it. But if you're a stickler and you want to go with a the pattern, then that's where you're going to see that extra chain. But for this repeat, you're going to go right into that where that double crochet comes up right here. And you're going to do a double crochet, chain one, and then the cluster. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull up, go through two, yarn over, same hole, same stitch. You're going to do that three times. Go in, pull up, and go through two. And then when you've got four, see your, all your little half doubles right here, make that cluster, pull through all the way. And that is the end. You're going to just go ahead and pop this in right to the next spot here. Oops. All the way through your pattern. Double crochet, chain one, and a cluster. Cluster is like three half doubles that you complete together. <laughs> it's kind of like a very cool stitch. I love it. So we're going to go ahead and do that all the way along. Each row is going to end with just a double crochet. And that makes it very easy to put a border on. Um, here, let me show you. So there's our cluster end. And then this is where we're going to, each row, remember we want a cluster and a chain one before the double crochet. So what we're going to do on the end of all these turning chains where we have a chain four is we're going to do a double crochet in the third chain up. So what I like to do is find out where my my last double crochet is. Here, I'll come back out for that. So here's what I'm left with. Here's my last cluster, finishing my last shell stitch. And I've got um, the chain here, I mean the stitch here, that belongs to the cluster. And then this next one is gonna be my chain one. So I wanna go into this third one. So that, that gives me a chain one at the end of my row. And there you go. Now a lot of times I say that one of my deciding factors on whether or not I'm going to do a border is if the if the project looks okay on its own or not. Um, in this case, because we have a chain one here after the double crochet on the edge, it's not going to mess anything up when you go into that gap to put a border on. Sometimes the um, Sometimes the edge stitch, whoops, sometimes the edge stitch is part of the pattern. And when you're going to put in the double crochet, I mean the, the border here, it's going to mess up the pattern. But in this case, we had a double crochet on the end with a chain one. So there's uh, an intended chain one space here. So then I don't mind putting that border on that would pull that double crochet away. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you can see here the double crochet has the border on it and it doesn't mess up what it, you know, what we're looking at here because it had that chain one space in there. So keep on keeping on for as long as you want, as tall as you want your, your project to be and just keep, you know, you're going to do a chain four to come up, which is your double crochet and a chain one. And then you're going to go into uh, the edge here to make a cluster and that finishes your shell here as you see here you've got your double your four your chain four would be here so that's your double crochet and a chain one and then you've got your cluster so here's where we chain four you're still going to come into here and do a cluster to complete that shell and then come over here and do a full shell which is double crochet chain one and then the cluster and then you're just going to jump right over to this spot here and do your double crochet, chain one, cluster. And then just jump right over to here, double crochet, chain one, cluster. And then on the edge, remember, we need a chain one. So we've got our four chains here. 
you're going to leave one for a chain one and you're going to do a double crochet in the third chain so that we continue to have this um, chain space along the edge and then you don't have to do a border if you don't want to this is what your this the edge of your project would look like if you don't do a border so it's one that's okay without a border or you can put the border on and it won't mess up the project it won't mess up the design so I hope that was you know I didn't want to go on and on and on with such a basic stitch but um, it is a very very easy one that you can just kind of do autopilot again chain four oops. turn cluster in the same and just keep on keeping on all right I hope you enjoyed it um, so like along here I would just do two that's what I did for this blanket. Um, I put two stitches in here, two single crochets in here. I put, uh, so two for each row, and then on this one, I would do one here and one here. Two here, and then one here and one here. So that um, it kind of evens out the edges. But you don't have to put one on, but I, I definitely believe that you can get away with putting it. And it, you know, it isn't a perfectly straight edge, so you that's just part of the pattern. I think that the border looks great on this one, and um, you know, you can either do it in a contra contrasting color, or the same if you were doing the blanket all in one color, you could do the same color for the border just to help make it re look real clean. And um, sometimes you don't want to pop some time of color, you know, sometimes you just want the pattern that are the colors that are in the blanket. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and you plan to make one. Let me know if you do. You um, go to our Facebook page that we've created and post a picture there, or I'd be happy to share it with our YouTube group if you want to email it to me. Uh, it's amylovescrochet at gmail.com. It's in the um, about tab on my main page, and I uh, always have it linked there for you to find. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderfully blessed day and come back and see me again. Thanks. Bye-bye.